Hi guys. So we got to a stage now that we finished all the standard connection details, or let's call them the connection details that are already embedded into Revit. I've got the knee frame, the uh, Apex point, and the pace plate. Three different connection details. All of those connection details were standard into Revit. At this stage, we will be working on a slightly different connection details. For example, if I look at this side here, so for this connection detail here, for example, if I look at the connection between the strut, the rafter, and the two rods, if I try one of these standard connection details from Revit, connecting these four members together, that will give us a connection detail that won't be very organized. I can utilize this connection detail here, for example, the triple tubes with the gusset. If I'll give it a minute. So this is the connection detail will be produced by a rivet. As you can see, this connection detail doesn't look very organized. So we have two ways to go around this. We either we create our own custom connection detail, which would be a good exercise for you to practice all functions included within the steel tab. So we've got to create a plate, create a bolt connection, wheel connection, all of those for a customized connection. Or we can modify this connection to suit our rods and the uh, strut here. So let's start by just creating a customized connection detail. If I delete this connection detail here, so the aim of our design is to create connection detail similar to this. So we have the plate that it's welded to the side of the rafter and this gusset plate will be bolted to another three plates. Each one of those is fixed to the bracing, to the strut and the other bracing rod. The two bracing rods will be welded to these plates here and the strut will be capped with another plate and welded to this connection plate. And all of this should be a bolt connection so it could be done on site. So let's start, keep this in mind, and let's start doing this connection detail on our model. So starting from here, obviously the first thing we need to create is the plate that will join all of them together. So the first thing, if I go to a plate, to draw a plate, the first thing I need to determine the plane where we're drawing this plate. So just generally speaking, if I need to draw any plate, any steel plate, anywhere within the model the first thing the software will ask you at what plane you need to draw this plate because each plate will need a plane to be drawn in so if i go to plate the first thing i need to do to set a plane now the most suitable plane here you can tell i need a plate to sit in this area to follow the rafter fall or slide that means the best plane to set or to choose is the top of the rafter and then we can move the plate down. So if I, as you can see, I've got the top of the top flange is highlighted. I'll click on that. So now I set my plane. The next thing for drawing a plate, what you have to do to draw the boundary of that plate. So if I need to draw the plate here rather than drawing in 3D, which is a bit hard like that, I don't know where I'm drawing. I can look at it from the top. This is the connection detail that we are working with. And if I change my view to wireframe so I can see through, there are lots of members on the way. So what we can do, we can exit this, escape, press, exit here. Yes, we'll discard it for now. And I'll look at it from a different side. This is the area I'm working with. So what I can do, isolate this area from all other members to make it way easier for me. Just keep that in mind, it's easier for you to do this for connection guys. As much as you can isolate it would be easier. So I've chose the selection box. I can't see the selection box boundary because I've got it hidden. So I can just unhide this and make it smaller just for my area to work with. That will make me more efficient in getting this done. Unhide that. 
and there's another member here will be on the wire we don't need it for this connection detail so what we can do just press hedge hedge and that will hide it and then go apply hide isolate to view so these are the members we are just trying to connect together now this will make it easier i'll go back to plane and i'll make sure again i'll set my plane for the top just zoom in please make sure you're choosing the right plane top of the rafter now I can look at it from the top, change my U to wireframe, and I need my plate to sit around here. So I can draw it either by lines or easier, I'll draw it by rectangle. So if I, if I start from here, this is where I need it to go, and extend it to roughly here. So now I can just select that and look at the measurements, these two uh, edges looks okay because that's where I'll, I'll create the connection here so I want these rods to meet at the corner of this plate and um, I'll just double check this measurement here 220 seems all right it, in my opinion will be enough to create our connection the only one parameter here guys for your connection so if you ask me which one is good which one is not the only one parameter you've got the edge distance for your connections because this is a one connection will be under lots of axial forces are the tension or compression just keep an eye on the edge distance for your port connection that's the main parameter for your design here okay so let's just make sure this is connected to the face of the whip so i can just simply move it So that would be it for my uh, boundary of the plate. The thickness of the plate will go with 10 millimeter thick plate. I think we've got it as 12 millimeter thick plate. Let's double check the specification for that. So we have the strut and the rods are connected with a 10 millimeter cleat plate. So let's go with 10 millimeter cleat plate. As I said, the specification will come from the design engineer who've done the calculations for you and they should be able to help you with the exact sizes. So this is the plate where we where we created it on the top of the flange. So what we need to do now, just we need to move it down. I'm looking at it here. If I move it to 40, should be that's sitting in the right plane in my opinion. That's good enough for what we need it for. As I said, all of those parameters are not really critical in terms of size in terms of where does it sit at what height all of those the only one critical parameter here is your edge distance for your port connections so I go back just make sure this plate here will be lined up so i'll just go edit boundary and move it to set the face of the web okay and i'll press ok in 3d and this is our plate so to start with just what we established so far to draw a plate the first thing you need to do you need to set your plane don't forget that so I set your plane right and that will make it way easier look for an easy clear view of your plate where you're drawing it and change your view and maybe change the graphic appearance to wireframe so you can see things clearly and then just draw your boundary of your plate if you do these steps you should be able to draw a plate easily okay so we've got the first thing done which is the plate for the connection now one of the other things that we need to create is start with the strut we need to shorten the strut create a cab plate for it let's look at our model so we this is my strut here I need to shorten the strut from here to this area and I need to create a cap plate for it and another plate here so I can port to this plate. So let's look at it on our model here. First thing we agreed on, we need to shorten this strut so we can go to steel, shorten. And will ask me which member do you want to shorten? As I said, guys, keep an eye on the commands here at the bottom. I'll give you directions. This is the member we need to shorten. Say it's by 50. I'll increase that based on the size of the plate that we've drawn. I'll choose to 40. 
see how this is going to look like give it some time just that's enough that will allow for another tin plate here for the cab plate and weld it to another plate there I'll make it to 50 just to allow enough space in case I don't want things to be crowded here okay I can start shortening those it's still a bit early but we can do that if you want to you can shorten let's try this again so I can shorten those up to here so they don't intersect with this plate so if I need to shorten this rod I'll just got steel shorten I need to shorten this member and by let's choose 350 see how's that gonna look like that's okay so maybe I'll change that to 320 330 looks a good happy medium between them okay if I apply the same thing here that should do the job so I still shorten shorten this by 330 that's it looks good okay so in case now you chose a number for example let's say that I chose a wrong number here selecting shortening could be sometimes tricky this shortening here is called modifier so if I got steel all of those are modifiers you can see the name here so to, to select one of these modifiers and amend it because I can amend this distance otherwise if I go shorten again it doesn't open this existing shorten just creates a new shorten here which is 50 millimeter if I change this to 200 this is not hurting me at all look this short in here is still governing the cut of the rod this one here doesn't make any difference so what we need to do we need to select the existing modifier and amend that to do that so you have a few different ways of doing it I can select everything for example and that will include the members and all the modifiers I've got a short in here another one there and these two are created here and I can filter for modifiers that will select them all and then I can select the one by just click on the one modifier you need to change and that will open that so you can modify it so if I need to delete that extra modifier I've added here I can select them all and go to filter filter everything I don't want to select the plates and structural framing members I just want the modifiers I have currently four of them and I need this modifier to be selected and I can just delete it okay so if I select now everything this modifier is gone let's undo keep this one here so one other way that you can do it simply by using the tap the tap button on your keyboard as we agreed if I select this member that will select the member we won't select the modifiers so what you can do now just by pressing on tap again so I keep select the member keep your mouse hovered over it without just clicking anything just keep selecting tap until you go back to it again and you can see it highlighted with glue you can click on it and you can select that one and that will allow you either to modify it or delete the modifier okay so keep in mind this this way for selecting modifiers guys could be a bit tricky especially when you have too many of them the second method usually comes more handy when you have too many of them but both work okay now if we go back to so we cut all the members shortened what I need to create now another plate sits as a cap plate for this member here and another plate to join the two together so the first thing when I think of a plate I have to think of a plane which one is the best plane to draw that plate so I straight away I'll think this is not the right plane to look at it if I look at it from here it would be easier so I can see the plane now I need to set a uh, before I set the plane sorry I have to choose a plate set my plane and I'll pick a plane this is the plane I need my plate to be drawn at now I can look at it from different view so I can see it clearly this is the view that I can see exactly what I need to draw if I draw a rectangle here sorry a square our uh, SHS is 75 by 75 so if I create this all the way what you can do you can just create it to the edges here if you want to if you want to go 
super accurate which is really you don't need to you can make it sit on the edges and then offset it by a certain distance to allow for the wilt because obviously we can't just create a plate that is that by mistake uh, you can't select a plate cap plate to be exactly the same size as the um, SHS because that doesn't allow for any space here to be well so we can do that and then we can offset this to the outside by say 10 millimeters or is it offset 10 And obviously I have to delete the inside part, which is a longer way of doing it. Really in this scenario here, guys, I think I've drawn an extra one here by mistake, so to buy a thousand. What I do usually for this, because this is not very critical for the actual size, no one will sit and measure it. You're not doing steel detailing, what you're doing steel design. Okay, so there is a difference between the two. So I could draw a square 90 by 90 and try to set that to be centered so an easy way I can just do it by draw here a square of 90 by 90 that's 95 we'll make it 90 and that's 90 and simply I just move this square to be sitting roughly center to the plate meters rather than five and that will do okay so that in my opinion is good enough now we can go all kind of detailed about it by creating some arc chamfer here or we can create an actual straight chamfer which is good to create a straight chamfer something just like that it doesn't have to be really super accurate so if I draw from here to there and if I select these two and create from here to there that will do the job and don't forget to trim and extend these edges that's good enough if you can do that but to go any further and start creating arcs and all of these detailed chamfers you don't need it guys because you are again let's don't forget you're not doing steel detailing and by creating this it's easy to create on the computer to create an arc here with a certain radius and you name it the problem with this on site or on the workshop for the guys who's cutting the steel and who's welding and making these chamfers based on your drawings it's not the easiest thing to be done and it's just time consuming for not too much benefits out of it so keep that in mind so anyway we'll go back so we've got our plate boundaries so we go okay and then we specify our plate to be 10 millimeters thickness of it so if i look at it in a shaded view you can see what we create we just create a cap plate for this shs now the second thing comes in we need to create another plate on this side here to connect between the two members with the strut with this plate here and again the first thing i'll think of the plane so i'll choose a plate and i'll choose this is my plane now to be the most appropriate plane and choose a good view that you can see it clearly this is from here it looks good and change your view to wireframe usually is easier we need again I don't have to be super accurate so I have to choose the rectangle I don't have to be super accurate as we agreed one of the main things I need to be accurate about is the edge distance and that will, de will determine generally speaking that will tell me if the joint will fit together so if it's doable or it's not if these ports will have enough space to be located that's all what I need to know I don't need to no one will follow this level of design what we're doing is the engineering layouts it's not the shop drawings you are doing a layout or engineering plans for a consulting firm not for a, a fabricator so no one will follow your drawings to create the exact size of this plate what they be doing they'll be just looking at it okay this is the connection detail they want 
they need to fit this amount of ports so we'll do it and your job at this stage to make sure that to fit all of those together with the critical parameters taken care of like the edge distance to make sure this joint will work that's all so this is the size of the plate that looks good and i can just simply press k from here and the thickness of this plate 10 millimeter and done this is our plate the next thing we have to create another two plates here going by the um, rods and then we have to add the port connections so let's create the plates here for the rods I'll go plate set my plane I want this is to be my plane look at it from the top and change to wireframe if I need to create this plate here I start drawing there's two ways of doing it you can draw a rectangle and the problem with that won't allow you to draw a rectangle with the same direction of the rod but you can draw it for example like that and then select your lines and rotate them for example so I'll rotate them I'll move the rotation center to roughly here as we agreed we are creating something just good enough doesn't have to be super accurate and that will be good enough then I can move it to sit in place so we need it we need this plate here to have enough weld so what things you need to keep in mind guys if I move it from here to sit just around here I need enough space here or enough distance for welding weld contact between the rod and the plate so the rod and plate will be welded together here so I, I need enough distance for that and I've got to create another two ports here and you remember we need edge distance for these two ports that edge distance will be measured from this port to this edge here to the underneath uh, plate and the last port to the edge we're creating here therefore I need to move this I'll select that I need to move it I can just move it by sliding here which is I don't really prefer doing that but as we said because we are drawing something approximate that will be enough so that will give me enough distance for the two ports and if we find that we need to make it shorter we can I can move this one a bit more to give me more space here and I can press OK and what I can do look at it in 3d just to make sure it fits okay that looks good and I think I've got enough plenty of distance here we can shorten it if we need to down the track so we need to create the last plate if I will go plate let's draw this plate here using the lines rather than rectangle this time so it shows roughly close to the rod angle that's roughly where we need it to going at 90 degrees from that so if I just move this down that looks okay and go okay say project and let's look at it in 3D shaded that's what we're after guys now let's move on to the second step which is the connection detail of porting so I need to create port connection between let's start with the easier one between this plate here and that plate there so if we go back to our top view and wireframe I need to create two ports here and these two ports I think would be asked to provide 20 millimeter ports 8.8 .8 snug tight ports so I'll go to port and the first thing we'll ask what members do you need to port together or to join together so I'll choose these two plates here and this port connection here between the two plates so when I select these two plates I selected the first one 
press control and hold it down and select the other one the same as we select any two items together so i'll press enter these are the two items now it's asking at what surface do you want to place these boards where is the surface of the board joint so i usually look at it from an angle so i can select the surface accurately because if i look at it from the top here i can select the surface or the one underneath if you can see there are two surfaces on top of each other so to, just to make sure i select the right surface I look at it from a slight angle so I can select the top of the plate and that will give us the option to start drawing the boundaries of the port joint. So we'll select the boundaries of the port joint. As you can see, the port joint here, just look at it horizontally, the port joint here has to go between the shared area. I just rotated the drawing uh, 90 degrees so you can see it clearly. This is the area I've selected for the ball joint because that's the surface or the contact surface between the two plates, the shared surface between the two plates. I can't choose all the way here because this this area here shouldn't be part of our joint uh, of the port joint. The reason is if I place a port here, that will be just connected to one plate only, it won't be connected to the both plates. So. This is the boundaries where we need our ports and I can choose OK and now that will place a preliminary arrangement of the ports. We can go here to adjust our port specification. We need those to follow the Australian standard AS1252 for high strength ports or structural ports. I need them to be the grade of 8.8 .8 snug tight ports, diameter of 20 millimeters not with two washers that's fine and now we need to specify how many poles do we need at what direction so i i don't memorize guys at what direction each time that we need to do the poles i'll just simply try that if i if i want one pole one row of poles in one direction and two of the other direction apply just look at it that's not what we exactly want to have we want to have in the other direction so i need two poles in that direction and one bolt or one row in that direction here that's the arrangement that we're looking for the next very important step to do on these ports is just to specify the mainly the edge distance if you remember we we emphasized a lot about the edge distance for ports and we have to make sure that each port will have enough or sufficient edge distance to provide integrity for the connection and that would be dependent on the size of the port if you remember so if i look at the port sizes for 20 millimeter port i need to have a minimum edge distance specified by as4100 of 35 millimeters so i can go over there and make sure that i have 35 millimeters edge distance that's great so someone may ask what about this other edge distance so what we specify just to show you guys if i draw a quick sketch here what we specified is the edge distance from roughly from here the center of this board to the edge here okay so that is the edge distance that important to us which is the how much steel we have in the direction of the force because the forces in this member will be in this direction parallel to this ball joint that's why we have to make sure i've got minimum edge distance in this direction and that direction of what is required in the tables so for a 20 millimeter port we've got a 35 millimeter minimum edge distance the second edge distance specified here if i click on it it's asking for another edge distance if we have any uh, requirements for the edge distance in the second direction which is in this direction here which is in our case here it's not important because there's no forces in that direction here all the forces are tension and compression so all these forces will be parallel to the joint so that's the direction the important direction to us so there's no need to worry about the second edge distance mainly we have to look now at a, another parameter very important parameter other than the edge distance we have to specify another very important parameter or at least to double check that which is the pitch of the ports so the Australian standard also, also specifies another parameter which we will call a minimum pitch of ports that distance here guys refers to the intermediate distance between the two ports so I have to make sure that intermediate distance between the two ports, what is being specified, has to be at least two and a half minimum 
of two and a half the diameter of the ports. So if I'm using 20 millimeter ports in our example, this distance between the two ports, the intermediate distance should be two and a half there. That will create 50 millimeters, two and a half times 20. Also, it just says here that the most practical intermediate distance or the pitch of these ports to be 3.5 times the diameter of the port. That means the more practical distance between the two ports is three and a half uh, times the diameter of the port and as a minimum has to meet 2.5 the diameter of the port. So three and a half will be 70 millimeter for 20 millimeter ports, two and a half will be 50 millimeters. As you can see, recommends port pitch of 70 millimeter for M20. So if we look at it here, let's check our intermediate distance and if I scroll down, we've got a current intermediate distance between the two poles of 108, which is more than sufficient. That will give me more freedom on the edge distance, so we can make the connection look small proportion to the size of these poles. So I can make the edge distance, for example, 40 millimeters, if I have to, just to make it more proof. Okay. So now I know that our port joint meets all the requirements. As we agreed, guys, in our case here, we're not worried too much about the size of the plates for example no one would come and measure the size of the plate of your drawing that's the job for the fabricator and for the shop drawing designer your job to create an acceptable or adequate connection details taking account at least the minimum edge distance the spacing between the ports so if a professional would look at this joint that would make sense, yes, we have two M20 ports and we should have enough edge distance here. It does look proportion to the size of the ports. So if I need to create another port joint for this plate here, before I start, I'm just looking at these two plates. They look slightly different in size, mainly in the width of these plates. So I'll just make them similar to each other. If I check this plate here, this plate is about 85 millimeter uh, wide and Okay, we can't get the length because we didn't draw as a rectangle, so it's not parallel to each other. It's about three or five. Let's make this 300 exact, and that is 85 exact. Press OK, and let's do the same thing here. So if I get a sketch for this plate. We agree this will be 85 and this size will be 300. Now, if I just move the entire thing, I'll move it 7.5 millimeters that way. Let's keep it in the center. That looks okay. All right, so let's continue with our joint of the ports. Just to make sure that I've got a clear defined edge distance, what I will do rather than having this angle here, or sorry, this corner here for this plate, I'll create a chamfer cut here so I can have an accurate kind of rectangular shape here for my port joints. So to create a, a chamfer for the corner, I can go to steel, cut corner. Simply all I have to do is just go close to that corner and that will cut it. Ask me what do you want to cut on each side or what's the chamfered edge uh, distance. So in other words, what is this distance here? So I'll make it just 14 millimeters in each direction. Yep, maybe 50. Okay, the purpose, the reason I've done that, so I can create this rectangular shape here, guys, so I can make sure the joint that we'll be creating will have a clear edge distance from each side, okay? Not to have a large edge distance to the corner here, but we don't know about how much edge distance to these um, sides here. Okay, so I need to create another port joint here. So I'll go to port. I need to pull these two plates together, enter, and the surface of the plate in a slight angle, top of this plate here and look at it again from the top we need to place the port so it won't allow me obviously the same for the plates won't allow me to draw on a angle 
So I'll draw it just vertically and then I can rotate this uh, shape. Press escape, select the shape and I'll go rotate. I'll rotate it from this point here. Go rotate. Rather than taking it from here, I'll just take the rotation from here. I want to rotate this plate here. To around here. Okay. So I'll move this around. That's where we need it to be. And I'll just adjust those to be on the boundary of the plates. And if you notice the shared area, that's what we've been working on, is just here. Now I'm just looking at this measurement here, 120, okay? And keep in mind what we discussed before. So for two M20 poles, I need two inch distance here, each side of 35 millimeter, and I need a minimum of 70 millimeters between them, sorry, 50 millimeters between them. That will make 120 altogether. Or it's better to have 70 millimeters between them, which will make 140 millimeters altogether. I will explain. So if I look at it here, for this joint, we need to have at least 35 millimeter on this side, 35 millimeter on that side. For this area that we're drawing, I need to have 30 millimeter on this side, 35 millimeter on that side, that's 70. And preferably, if I can have 70 in between them, that will make 140. What we currently have is 120, so maybe it's a good idea to move this here by another 20 millimeters to be 140, and that should give us the preferable side or more practical size for this ball joint. I'll press OK for now. I'll go first, before I forget, amend this plate by moving it 20 millimeter. millimeters. And go OK. Now let's go back to our all joints. What do we have here? We have a strain of standard 1252, 8.8 .8 snug type, 20 millimeter diameter with two washers. We agreed one in this direction. And the edge distance minimum of 35 millimeters. Okay. And that's what we're after. Okay. So that's 20 millimeter ports. I have at least 35 millimeter in each direction, and I have 70 millimeter spacing between them. Three and a half times the diameter of the port. I'll apply the same configuration here. First of all, I'll chamfer the edge. So I've got steel, cut corner, this is the corner. Cut it by 50 millimeter on each side. And this it looks like it's tight the same as what we have there. We'll make sure that we have enough space for it. This guy do the port first, so that will give us enough indication. Or I'll just amend the plate. I'll increase the depth of the plate by another 20 minutes. That should be more than what we need. Let's go to port these two plates together enter and what surface this is the surface looking again from the top and I'll just draw the shape here sorry draw the shape in here then we then we can rotate the shape we'll go rotate we'll select the shape rotate Rather than rotating from this angle, I'll rotate from here. Rotate this uh, face to be in line with that. Now I can just move it all. That's roughly what we are after, guys. So that looks good enough for what we need it for. Save the project. And let's go double check our uh, design here. 1252. 
snug top boards, 20mm diameter. Not with two washers, edge distance of 35 and I have one bolt in that direction of pi. Let's look at it. So we have now intermediate distance between them 70 millimeters. Perfect. Alright, that's it guys. So this is our pore joint. It does meet all the requirements for the Australian standard, most importantly for us. Uh, we can just do some minor improvements here. We can chamfer these corners so we don't create we don't keep um, sharp edges. And that's it. What we need to do now, we need to create weld connection. We learn how to create weld connection. Let's look at our joint in 3D. So this is our joint, what we created. So if I need to create a weld connection to start with, for example, we need to weld this gusset plate to the whip of the rafter. What do we do for that? Similar, very similar to the board joint. The first thing we choose, if you notice in both joints, the first thing we choose the command or the type of joint we want. So we want a wheel joint. We'll ask what members between this member, which is the rafter, and this plate. While I'm holding down control button, that means these two together, group selection. Press enter, I finished my selection, and we'll ask for the edge where I need to place that wood rather than the surface. What we chose for the bolt connection, we had to choose a surface where do we need to place the bolt. But for a wilt, we need just a line where what's the edge you are placing the wilt at. So I press that, and that will create the symbol of wilt. If you look at that. Okay. That's the weld connection here. We can create another one from the underside of that plate joint. So I've got again do it these two together. Enter and this time I'll place it on the underside edge. As we said guys, obviously after you place the weld joint here, you can go to this menu to change the specification of the weld. But that's not very important to us at this stage because mainly for weld we are going to look in details into what's down the track, mainly when we start annotating our connection. Because in structural consulting drawings, we don't show too much about the weld in terms of um, symbols. What we do, we specify the weld in uh, annotation if we have to. If we don't, that means a contractor will follow the minimum standard weld design, which is six millimeter fillet weld. Okay? We'll talk about this in more details down the track unless we specify what type of wood is it structural wood or a general purpose wood and um, we've got a few details to go through. So you can go ahead and place wilds. I'm not going to do them all just to show you the example. Place wood for example to connect as you can see there I've already placed a wood joint here to join this strut to the plate to the cab plate here. I have to, that's why we allow this edge around, if you remember, this small edge here. We allow that or we maintain that edge so they can place wood around. So I need to create a wood connection between these two items. So I just go to wood and select these two together. Enter at what edge, for example, I need it at this edge here. Done. So you can go all around this strut here and start placing wilds. Um, if you would like to, but to us, uh, this joint is complete. So if I look at it here, and you can just uh, forgot that you've got another wood connection. If I hide this rafter here, you've got another wood connection to go between these two plates here. If you'd like to add that one too, so I need to connect these two together. Enter at this surface, so that will show a wood joint between the two. Okay, I'm not going to uh, create a wood connection between the rod and the plate. Reality is, if I look at it guys, if I select this plate here, reality is that's where the wood would go, in between the rod and the plate. Simply, they will place the rod on top of the plate and they will start welding all around here. After they clean the surface, make sure 
the wind will have enough surface to contact between the two items and they'll start creating the wind along this edge and that edge. Having said that, on Revit, if we need to create this, because we don't have a line, if you remember the last step for replacing your wood, you need an edge, a line. If you don't have that line, you can't place the wood there. Because we don't have this, because of the surface of the rod, it's all round, there's no edge there, we won't be able to place it unless we chamfer part of the edge, which is we can. You can chamfer part of this edge, we can chamfer small portion here and that will create two small edges so you can use it to place the wheel but we don't want to go down that path because there's nothing really you have to show about this unless you're doing fabrication drawings you don't need to show that wheel there instead we can if we want to we can indicate about the type and the size of that wheel during the annotation so when we create our connection details we can just make our connection detail just like that in wireframe and we can put an arrow here indicating the size and the length of that world if we want to so that's it guys that's what we need for now so we, we will show a different way for creating the same connection using the automated uh, options we've got from River for connection I'll show you that in the next video and you can choose with whichever you find an easier way for you to do it. Alright guys, thank you.